On Inside Bobcat Athletics, we're going to give you a behind the scenes look of the athletic department as Brant talks to two assistant athletic directors. Let's join Brant, who's with Assistant Athletic Director for Compliance, Kelsey Solis. Thanks, Maddie. Here we are in the Maroon and Gold Room next to Strand Coliseum at Texas State, and joining us is Assistant Athletic Director in charge of Compliance, Kelsey Solis. And uh, Kelsey, let's kind of talk about your background a little bit. You've been in the position now for about a year, but you've been at Texas State for five. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I came here originally as a um, intern with football operations. Um, I knew Mike Barella from North Texas, and so as a student, um, and so I came down and interned for him for a semester in 2007, I believe. And then the internal operations position opened up in that December, and I applied for it and got it. So I sat in that position for three years, doing admissions and housing and things like that. Um, and then we created a financial aid position for athletics in um, the financial aid office and um, for institutional control things. Um, and so I moved over, because I was doing financial aid in my current position as well. So I moved over and did that for a year. Um, and then our former compliance person left. And, um, and so they asked me to come back over here as a compliance person, so here I am. <laughs> well, the word compliance is something that you hear all about college athletics, but for those who aren't familiar with exactly what it is, tell us what compliance is all about. Basically following the rules. Um, I'm here to help the coaches. Um, the NCAA has obviously a very thick rule book that the, the coaches and student athletes and staff have to follow. Um, and so I'm here to, to be a resource to them um, if they have a question about what those rules are. Um, and, and kind of a go between um, if we need interps or anything like that from the NCAA, clarification on rules um, and how they apply to you know some of the crazy situations that we come up with. Um, and so I'm, I'm kind of here to help them do that. Um, and, and make sure that they're following the rules and also working within the rules. I mean, there's things that we want to be able to do um, within the rules, and so we kind of get there with that. What about uh, the role of compliance during the season? I mean, right now, uh, there's not as many teams in season, baseball, softball still going on, golf, track as well, but, you know, particularly in the fall, volleyball, football are happening, soccer, you're just getting into the two basketball seasons. What, what happens in season for compliance? It's very busy. <laughs> um, we're regularly regularly monitoring um, practice logs. So we um, run a system called Jump Forward, which is our monitoring software. Um, and the coaches have to log in practice hours because while a team's in season, they can only practice so many hours a week. Um, and so, and that's 20 hours. And so the coaches go in and log those hours and then we check and make sure they're correct, send them out to some student athletes to confirm that. We monitor that on a weekly basis, um, as well as recruiting, because obviously during the season, the coaches are recruiting also. So we um, Jump Forward also monitors phone calls, text messages, emails, things like that. And we monitor those on a monthly basis. Um, the coaches log their calls and things like that on their phones. Um, and so those are kind of the primary things that we're doing. Also at the beginning of the year when teams report, we have football, soccer, and volleyball all report prior to school starting. So we do um, education. We do our first of the year compliance meetings and they fill out tons of paperwork. Um, also now through Jump Forward, it's all electronic. Um, and so we meet with each team at the beginning of the year to do education. Um, and then like I said, we're just constantly, um, we have football on the road. So we do travel approvals. Um, meals if there's vacation period we we have to monitor there's different rules for that so over thanksgiving about feeding the team and things like that so um we're kind of addressing things that pop up but then also we have a routine you know um it's the the practice logs come in the recruiting logs come in um so we kind of have a, a master plan but then we we also hit the things that pop up too <laughs> And compliance really, you would prefer not to be reactive, but proactive as well. So what, what preventative things are in place to make sure that all the rules are abided by? A lot of education. During the summer we kind of is our time to kind of regroup and we set an education calendar for our coaches for the entire year. Um, and so we pick topics that are, um, you know, camps and clinics, roster management, um, ethical conduct, personnel. We do, we do certain topics throughout the year um, and especially this year we've hit on new legislation because there's a ton of new um, legislation coming out for the 13-14 year. Um, but education is a big part of what we do. We also do education obviously with the student athletes. We try to hit them twice a semester. Sometimes we pop in and just do some reminders, um, things like that. Um, Jump Forward is a huge 
huge um, preventative measure for us because it does a lot of the monitoring for us. Um, the coaches have it on their phone. So when they make, try to make a phone call to a prospect and they shouldn't be, um, if it's past the one phone call per week or whatever, it'll pop up and say, are you sure you want to do this? Um, and so that's been a huge help for us, um, especially with our department. There's only two full-time compliance people in our department. So that's been huge for us. Um, but like I said, the biggest part is education. We're trying to reach out now to our boosters um, for education. We sent out letters to all of our gift and kind partners and corporate sponsors reminding them about booster education. Um, and then we have a compliance Twitter also that we try to run. Um, and so we've gotten actually a lot of response around signing day. We got a lot of responses from boosters on um, Twitter, a lot of um, conversation, I guess, asking questions about, um, because the big thing with them is that they can't um, speak with recruits, prospects. Um, and so they had some questions, so I thought that was really great. It kind of picked up our Twitter a little bit and, and was exciting on my end, so. Well, that's a look at compliance. Certainly a lot that goes into it uh, to keep everything in line for Texas State and Division I Athletics. Kelsey, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Innovation, exploration, creative discovery. These are the trademarks of Texas State University. As the state's newest emerging research university, we're transforming your world one mind at a time. Your world, our research. Texas State University, the rising star of Texas. Hi, I'm Macy Hare, I'm number 11. I'm a senior, I'm from Leander, Texas, and I'm a catcher. I am an applied arts and sciences major. I am going to graduate in August, yay! And so I'm almost done, only two classes left. My favorite thing about coming here, I love my teammates. I would not train them for the world. They are such an amazing group of girls, and I just, every day, have the best day with them. And you know, they really make it enjoyable to come to practice. We appreciate all your support and we love that y'all come to every game and we hope that you keep coming to all the games. Most Bobcat fans have seen the improvements made at Bobcat Stadium, but there are improvements being made at other facilities as well. Brant joins Assistant Athletic Director Jeremy Stolfa to talk about the improvements being made at our facilities. Thanks, Maddie. Now here we are at Strand Coliseum with uh, Game Operations and Facilities Director, Assistant Athletic Director Jeremy Stolfa joining us. And it's an appropriate time to talk with you, Jeremy, given the fact there's some work being done here at Strand Coliseum with the floor and the seating. And, and we'll get into that in just a minute. But first, uh, it's been about a year for you now here at Texas State. Uh, what, what brought you here to San Marcos? Well, it was a great opportunity. The university is growing tremendously. Athletics is growing tremendously. It's, it's moving from conference to conference, and it's a great opportunity for me professionally and to, to, for the seat of the university to grow. And of course, college athletics you're very familiar with, having been a former Division I football player yourself. Yes, yes. I, I actually played against Southwest Texas and Texas State at Stephen F. Austin, and then I decided to come here and, and become Cincinnati D for facilities and game operations. So. Now, when you got here, you really hit the ground running, and when you arrived, the new uh, additions had been just added to Bobcat Stadium, and we'll get into the football complex in just a moment. Let's talk about where we're at right now. Strand Coliseum, understand some work is being done to the floors here, and there are going to be some uh, changes to the seating as well. Take us inside of what's being done here at Strand. Okay, well, Brent, uh, with the addition of Sun Belt, we had to change our logo, so we decided to refinish the entire quarter repaint. and. Uh, give it a whole new look. It hasn't been changed since we went to Texas State. The original service was from Southwest Texas and it changed to Texas State and this is the first since then. So we put in a new maroon border, a new Sunbelt logo. We stained the wings of the basketball court. Beginning next month, we will start renovating our chairs. The maroon chairs will be replaced with some newer, nicer chairs, a lot more comfortable. Then we also will be renovating our old weight room it's here for our student athletes, which also referred to as the dungeon by them because it's old and nasty and needs a lot of attention over there. 
So new head coach and new changes to the uh, to the right. basketball arena, right. and that includes the practice facility as well for, for Bobcat Correct. basketball. Correct. One of our demands here is we have three three sports that utilize Strahan Coliseum, and Strahan, especially October and November, is really utilized in a lot of restraints with outside, outside events and rentals, and also uh, just practice times is difficult. So we need an additional practice facility for us. Gym 102 offered that opportunity for us. We met with HHP, working with class schedules and whatnot. We'll be able to utilize that space, but we're gonna have to do some renovation in there. Adding a hardwood floor, taking out the old tartan surface. Actually, we're gonna go over the tartan surface. We'll be adding goals over there, and then just dolling it up, putting scoreboards in, things like that. Now, we mentioned football, and again, when you, did, when you got here, the North End had been added to Bobcat Stadium. But uh, that wasn't really it for renovations, you know, for, for the uh, football stadium. Understand there's some other work being done there as well, particularly in the southwest side of Bobcat Stadium. Correct, correct. The southwest corner of Bobcat Stadium, which is, has had various different things went on there. A couple years ago, it was a locker room place. That's where we hosted the, the visiting team that put their locker room there with, during renovations. Um, and then this past year, there was a tent there for the tea association. And we're going to make that more of a formal atmosphere. It's going to be, we're going to call it the pavilion. It's going to house our Bobcat Club for pregame. It'll be a, a nice place for them to go and, and enjoy their pregame activities. And then also at halftime, our T Association will be able to utilize that, which is our former letterman. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be glassed in with a lot of Bobcat memorabilia from years past. It'll have a balcony overlooking the field, a patio as well looking out over the field. It'll be a nice place. We, they, those, those places can call home, T Association Bobcat Club finally. Now you said when you played football for Stephen F. Austin, you played then known as Southwest Texas. Mm -hmm. So you saw Bobcat Stadium back then. What are your impressions of it today? Uh, it's, it's a tremendous facility, and Bobcat Athletics has, has seen a lot of growth just since I've, I, I even got recruited here. Just the changes that I've seen since then is tremendous, and, it, and we continue to grow day and day. Every day there seems like to be a new project. It's guns blazing around here with facility improvements. Speaking of facility improvements, some have been made to the tennis complex as well. That's another place. We actually just put up new windscreens out there. We have a branding opportunity for us. We put a lot of Bobcat athletics, Bobcat tennis, and our Supercat logo on the fences out there. Uh, it looks really nice. I encourage people to go out there and look at it. We're also renovating the, the indoor courts out there. Those are old. I don't know when they were built, but they haven't seen any attention since they were probably built. Uh, we have basically gutted them out, which is demolition going on right now. If you drive down Sesame, you'll see demolition taking place. Um, and then we're going to basically enclose the entire facility, make it a true indoor practice facility for tennis. And then if we have weather issues, I can go in there and use the facility. Well, Jeremy, it's been a busy first year for you, and uh, keep up the good work. Well, thank you, sir. Let's take a look at some highlights from last week's baseball action.
All three, one, two, three. All in. Welcome back to Inside Bobcat Athletics. I'm Brant Freeman just outside the Rune and Gold Room here at Texas State. It takes a special kind of player to make the NFL. The kind that can pick up 49 tackles in four games. Who can punish an opposing quarterback four times in one game. Who could pile up eight tackles for loss on one Saturday. Who can play two different positions and still end up with over 240 tackles for his career. And the Bobcats had that kind of special player in Joplo Bartu, who signed an NFL free agent contract this past weekend with the Atlanta Falcons, a team that was one win away from making the Super Bowl this past season. The team that beat the Falcons in the NFC title game was the San Francisco 49ers, and they're going to have a Bobcat of their own when they open minicamp later this month. That will be Daryl Morris. Morris was fourth in the whack interceptions this year with four of them, and he wowed scouts the pro day earlier this month. Daryl had a 36 and a half inch vertical, 14 reps on the bench press, and had one of the fastest 40 times ever for a Bobcat at a blazing 4.31 seconds. So the list of Bobcat NFL players moves on from Jim Stanky to Reggie Rivers, from Fred Evans to DJ Hall, and now Joplo Bartu and Daryl Morris. Best of luck to them at the next level. From the gridiron to Bobcat baseball and the softball as the regular seasons wind down for both teams as they look to make their WAC tournaments. In Bobcat softball, Coach Waters' team is in a four-way tie for third place in the WAC, and the Cats can clinch a postseason berth with one win in their final regular season series this weekend at Utah State, or one loss by UT Arlington will put the Bobcats into the conference tournament, which opens next week in Ruston, Louisiana. For Coach Harrington's baseball team, the Bobcats are one game back of first place behind Cal State Bakersfield and UT Arlington. And right now the standings are tight in the WAC. Four games separate first place from eighth place in the Western Athletic Conference. And the Bobcats look to maintain their standing this weekend when they take on the rival UTSA Roadrunners in San Antonio in a three-game series. The Bobcats beat the Runners earlier this season 6-0 and in the overall series have 47 wins compared to 27 for UTSA. And by the way, the WAC tournament right on the horizon starts May 22nd in Grand Prairie, Texas. And it's a much different tournament than in years past. The Bobcats, as opposed to playing a double elimination round robin tournament like the Southland Conference, will be in a pool play tournament in the WAC tournament coming up later this month. So, between NFL signees, baseball and softball, it's an exciting time here at Texas State. And you can stay up to date with all things Bobcat by going online at txtbobcats.com. For Inside Bobcat Athletics, I'm Brant Freeman. That's all for this week's episode of Inside Bobcat Athletics. Thanks for checking us out, and be sure to share this with all your fellow Bobcats. For Brant Freeman and the crew, I'm Maddie Serviente, and thanks for watching.